Welcome to Essential Chats on Myofascial Release, where we talk about some interesting and fun topics around John F. Barnes' Myofascial Release approach, starring Valerie McGraw, physical therapist for John F. Barnes, and Cindy Hodgson, owner of Essential Therapies. And most of all, introducing Chloe, who really steals the show and hangs out with us the entire time. In case you were wondering, Chloe and her friend Jake here are Australian cattle dogs. They're actually part dingo and are very fun, active creatures. Enjoy. Dr. Cindy Hodgson here, physical therapist, exercise physiologist, and myofascial release specialist. And I am here with Chloe. She wants to really steal the show. (laughs) (laughs) Chloe, but mainly with Valerie McGraw, who is the chief physical therapist and clinic manager for John F. Barnes Myofascial Release Treatment Center, also known as the Sanctuary in Malvern, Pennsylvania. And I have had the honor this week to be here hanging out as a staff therapist for the week. And it's really been a great time. And I'm stealing this opportunity to take a few moments and talk with Val, just chat about how, what it's like working for John Barnes, the father of myofascial release in my mind for over 30 years. Wow. <laughs> well, first I want to say thanks for coming and being with us uh, this past week and, and next week and working with us. We've uh, gotten rave reviews. Uh, Cindy's a great therapist. Um, <clears throat> what it's been like to working with John for 31 years, It's it's been a, a splendid ride. Um, I don't think I knew what I was getting into uh, back when I first started, when I first met John, actually when I first heard about my official release, um, the path that it would lead me down. And um, life events just kept unfolding, leading me in that direction. And uh, one of my professors had started taking, or, or took his seminars and introduced us in PT school. And I, I met John up in, um, uh, Sugarbush, Vermont, at a uh, seminar series. And uh, I was so impressed with what uh, he was teaching. It was so different than anything that we had learned in school, and it really made a lot of sense. And uh, so uh, working for him a few years after I graduated PT school um, was, uh, and it's been an incredible experience. Uh, the results of it that we see, um, the the journeys that uh, people are on, the people that we treat, and the transformations that we see uh, are very rewarding. And it, it's almost like expected, you know, like mm-hmm. I've been doing it for so long, I don't know anything different as far as um, any other way than to do this. And I am a physical therapist by trade and my official release, um, you know, can be done by any therapist who are licensed to touch. Uh, so I really identify more with my roots in, in my fesh release than I than I do as a physical therapist, but that is my background. But um, I I just feel um, it's, it's not only been um, a tremendous uh, experience professionally, but personally, and I can't imagine my life uh, without incorporating these principles that we um, try to instill in our patients without, um, I can't imagine my life not having um, had this as part of it. It's guided me and helped me uh, through many situations um, and helped me grow as a, as a, as a, as a human being. So um, I feel like my official lease is um, uh, over the years and as I look back and what the transformations that we see in our patients, the work that we do that we're, um, I feel like this work is to me, one of the purest expressions of love for humanity. And I feel that John has um, has been a, uh, an example of that in watching um, how he's worked with patients over the years and and through seminars and um i just see that as as a as an expression of love this Mm -hmm. and that's what i believe we're here for is to love one another so i feel grateful to have this be part of my daily experience in living Mm -hmm. on this planet so um so for 31 years i feel like um i I feel like this is a vocation for me, like it's a calling in life and I can't imagine anything else. I mean, it's very rewarding. Um, 
and uh, gratifying. So well, well, I completely agree with, with all of those sentiments about it being just part <clears throat> of our lives. And I was introduced to myofascial release just briefly in PT school, but didn't get to go to a course for a few years. And when I did, what really hit me was hearing John talk about how it all comes back to love, just mm -hmm, like what you said. Mm -hmm, I remember mm -hmm. just being blown away and I'd been doing these techniques that I had learned from someone else. Mm -hmm. And just the way he put it all together mm -hmm. like that, it, mm -hmm. it really did. And, it, and I completely agree that it's a way. And I know a lot of myofascial therapists feel the, feel the same way. Yeah. But, and I and I think when I first learned because I was in PT school they taught it as techniques and yeah. and um, I didn't realize back then until I started taking the seminars and actually working with John and doing the work on myself really how deep this approach goes and and it treats all the whole part of our being you know not mm -hmm. just you know we we probably we did start with J stroking and strumming and. <laughs> in PT school and but at least it was an exposure mm -hmm. you know and uh that got me to to take the seminars and then I yeah, did one of my internships at John's treatment center which was a gift it was a tremendous experience oh, um imagine. so to me I don't know any I don't know any other way mm -hmm. um than to do to do it the way John teaches and uh, I'm very grateful for that <laughs> well the other really unique thing that you do here is just every week probably pretty much every week do you guys have intensives we do um we accept up to four intensives uh intensive patients per week it could be um uh, lay people who have been um struggling with pain of some sort or another or some kind of dysfunction uh, difficulty getting around um it could be a, a therapist who you know um struggling to get through a day at work or maybe burned out from you know uh just doing too much or their own injuries and life stressors um but we accept up to four uh people per week um for our two to three week intensive program and um and that includes like 15 hours a week of treatment and for people who are not therapists they go at least two weeks yeah uh people who are not my officially therapists uh the, the full program the intensive program is two to th is a two to three week program and it was designed that way because um as you get th you know it's 15 hours a week one session after another um after another we have patients referred to us from all over the country from excellent mm -hmm. therapists like you mm -hmm. who are doing my officially and one of the benefits of doing the intensive program, even when they're working with a highly skilled myofascialist therapist, is that when they come to one of our treatment centers, um, that repetition from Monday through Friday, 15 hours a week, a few hours a day, one session after another after another, you can, anybody can make it through a session, you know. Mm -hmm. But then the next therapist comes in and the next therapist comes in and your body has no other choice but to let go of the bracing and holding patterns that perpetuate pain and dysfunction. So that um, the we work as a team and that allows us to have more depth as a program, you know. Uh, something that say I might miss the other therapist pick up on and vice versa. We're all doing my fascia release, but we all have a little bit different background. Um, and so that allows us to have more, more input into their system and uh, greater depth, I think, and, and the results uh, that people are, people that people need and, and deserve. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, it, it is intensive for a reason. Um, th my fascia release therapists have the option of doing a one week program um because they've taken our seminars um and uh they understand the background uh, and the principles so they're starting at a higher level um, so they have the option of doing a one-week program but if they're having serious problems um they they will opt to do a, the full two to three week program mm -hmm. to address their needs so they they have some choices so I want to bring up again what you mentioned about different therapists and, mm -hmm. and how valuable that is. Uh, we were talking even just this this week in, in the clinic how, because um, we have the students there as well, the a skill enhancement mm -hmm. where um, myofascial therapists can come and learn as part. It's considered a seminar, right? right. A, a week-long seminar. Yeah. And we were talking about how all therapists have just a different touch even in a different field. Mm -hmm. And so there's even, even among you at the 
clinic there between Carol and you and then yeah. people were commenting, the patients were commenting yeah. on just how valuable that, that yeah. is. Um, how, as far as your local patients though, let's talk a little bit about that as far as different therapists. Mm -hmm. We've talked, early, as we talked earlier today, so Val and I were talking about a few things earlier on our, on our five on mile our, hike. On our five, five mile <laughs> hike. So, um, Go ahead and tell us. So, that. yeah. So the principles that we utilize in our intensive treatment program are the same um, with our local patients. So our lo our local patients they'll they'll come a couple times a week, um, and they'll work with our team again so that um, we're working. They have it's a multifaceted approach, and again, it allows us to have more input into their system. So whether they're do doing an intensive or local program, it's the same thing. Um, our, it, it, obviously, the local program is not going to go as quickly. Um, it'll be spaced out, but the person, you know, uh, may not be as severely involved and, you know, is maybe is, is still able to work and, um, you know, meet their uh, obligations in day-to-day -day living and incorporate the therapy into their day-to-day -day living. Roughly, so, so they're only coming for like, just like a traditional therapy time. So it could be half an hour or an hour, or an hour. Or a couple yeah. times a week. Yeah. And, and so like every, roughly every third visit, we'll have them come into the gym where we teach them how to self-treat. So things that mm -hmm. we find help them in treatment, we try to help them reproduce on their own at home using mm -hmm. simple things like the yellow ball, their foam cylinder, um, we teach them how to balance their pelvis right away. Um, it's so important to uh, address the pelvis, not only in each hands-on treatment session, but that they learn to um, do a very simple uh, push-pull exercise. It takes about a minute and they can, between their treatment sessions, get their pelvis level and function off a level basis support with l even legs. So it makes a big difference. So. Um, uh, you know, we teach them these things early on. And again, every third visit, we have a session that's devoted just to learning self-treatment so that they are, um, we encourage them to do about an hour a day at home and um, they could space that out. They can do it five or 10 minutes here or they could do it all at once. But the more that they can do, the faster their progress tends to be. So um, the programs are similar, except that the local program is just spaced out, you know, more. So one of the things that we also talked about was having different therapists. I know I wanted to bring this up because so many people and, and even in traditional PT, you know, patients get used to having consistency in their therapist and with that same person mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. I think, feel like it's a little different with myofascial release. And, and I know we have some um, issues or concerns with patients a lot of times. Well, I want to keep seeing this therapist and, and so on. And yeah. I, I asked you about what your protocol is, is here and why it's important to have that. Yeah. So if you could talk about that. Yeah. So it is to allow us to have more input. We all have a little bit different style, um, a little bit different background, but we're all practicing myofascial lease. We're following the myofascial principles, engaging at the barrier. We're holding for a sufficient amount of time, incorporating the the triad of the myofascial release approach, you know, mm -hmm. the, the structural work, the rebounding, the unwinding. So all of that is incorporated. Um, I think one of the things that happens when, uh, when somebody says they want to work with one person is it develops um, a familiarity it, it, and it keeps some kind of, um, I, it, it keeps it, it keeps them from stepping out of their comfort zone. It, mm -hmm. it, it, when you have a different therapist and working as a team, I think um, I think it, it, people are willing to to step out of their comfort zone a little more and uh, to feel the things that they need to feel and to let go a little bit more, um, rather than being like the sense of why well, I have to work with somebody uncomfortable and get used and get. It's almost a sense of protection, a cocoon that they're building around themselves. Mm -hmm. So again, we're all doing my fast release. And all of our therapists, you know, are handpicked by John and they're working at a very high level. Um, so um, everybody has a little bit different personality, but we, you know, we encourage, we encourage them to, to work with our, our team and it's for their benefit. They get more out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, once they do, um, they, they understand what we mean, mm -hmm. you know. So. And, and you try to get your patients to work with at least two of you. At least, on, yeah, on, at on least. a regular yeah. basis. And some of it may depend on, you know, because people are, have their work schedules and things like that, they may be able to come in certain times of the day and one therapist is more available at that For time sure. than another. Yeah. 
and they'll say, well, you know, maybe I'll wait for that person, you know, scheduled to open up. Well, we don't recommend that at all because you're, you're putting your own well-being on hold, just waiting for somebody scheduled to open up. So it's yeah. better to keep the progression, the momentum rolling uh, for local patients at least a couple times a week, ideally, than to wait for somebody scheduled to open up or, mm -hmm. or to wait for cancellation or something. So um, uh, most people, our, our patients are used to it. Now, every mm -hmm. once in a while, somebody will, you know, ask because they're maybe used to going to uh, another therapy and that's the way it was. Mm -hmm. But um, it, 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 the, the results tend to be uh, much greater and occur more quickly if you're working with the team. Yeah, great. So, that's, yeah. That, that's good to hear. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And then the other thing we were talking about was just... <sighs> I was asking you some, give me some stories of some, some cool stories that she's, she's like, oh, I don't know. Like, like, you know There's a and, lot. And here's, <laughs> here's what we, I, I think I, I realized too, it kind of hit me, well, this, you're so used to this. Like yeah. you're so used to seeing such amazing stories all the time. Yeah. That, it's expected. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and not to say that in a, in a, like not a pompous way or anything like that, but I, I'm so used to that, mm -hmm. you know? Um, that's what I know. Mm -hmm. And and so we each week, you know, there's new group of people that come through and, um, you know, we 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 kind of throw ourselves into our work in a, in a good way, you mm -hmm. know, and we uh, so uh, it, it's um, I, I, it's hard to put it into words, but we just we say so focus on what it is yes. that we're doing present in that moment I, and i can definitely say I, I saw that this this week which was cool because yeah. you know to be able to and then you're you know we talk yeah actually, hey what did you do with so and so yeah how about this and how let's plan this and, and yeah and it's uh, that's really cool and to have your input mm -hmm. you know we had a uh, some interesting people there that we collaborated on you know, we pass in the halls and we catch each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. how, what did you do here? And how was he here? And this, mm -hmm. what changes are you noticing? That's one of the values of the team approach because mm -hmm. we're not working in isolation. And it's, yeah. it, you know, we, you may, you know, as a my special release therapist, if you're working on your own, you may have a hunch about something or you mm -hmm. may, you know, want to test the boundaries in some way or not test the boundaries but you you have some ideas in 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 treatment and it's nice to have somebody to to bounce off you know Absolutely. and uh, a, a resource um so um you know it was nice collaborating with you this mm -hmm. week and it, it has yeah. been yeah uh, for many years, I was by myself, yeah. you know, just, and, and so I would even, you know, be on the phone yeah. with other therapists and I could, you know, would talk about, Hey, let me, let me roll this by, you know, it's so, yeah. and now that I have three great therapists working with me who are, who are still fairly new, but learning and doing great and going to right. courses all, all the time. It's like, it's so, it's so yeah. amazing to be able to, to share that. So, and, and that's what I think one of the uh, benefits of the study groups are is yeah. especially for therapists who are working in an area where there might not be anybody else. Um, the study groups are great. If you're not involved in, in the study group, um, I recommend you uh, find one. You can go on uh, my Feshley, um We have our Facebook group, MFR Insight, and you can get the link to that on myfeshleys.com. It's also on, um, yeah, it's on your website. Yeah, it's on our website. Yeah, there's a button yeah. on the home page mm -hmm. that you can click and ask to to subscribe to it. Mm -hmm. But it's a great way to connect with people um, that are doing my specialties and that um, are depending on which group you belong to, where in the country. They're all over the country, but um, they treat each other. Um, you know, you, you, the therapists that are just coming out of, say, you know, MFR 1 and Winding in 2, the introductory series, um, it's a great resource to find a study group in your area. I know Myrtle Beach is going on now, and I hear there's a lot of energy and excitement mm -hmm. um, with the people that are down there taking the seminar. And so it's a nice resource to kind of know that you get on the right track and have some more experienced therapists out there to help guide you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I highly, highly recommend it. Yeah. So, so any, any last thoughts in your, any last thoughts? Um, <laughs> don't stop getting treated. Uh, yeah. try to incorporate one of, one of the things that I recommend is definitely treat yourself, uh, incorporate it somehow through your day. It becomes habit so that your body, 
I was telling you before, my body seeks out treatment as I'm going through my day and I don't even realize it. Yeah. It's become a way of life. Um, but in the beginning, you have to take the time to do it and mm -hmm. feel into what it, what it is that you're working on um, so that you're tuning in. Um, take, take the time in the beginning to incorporate the things that you learn from your My Officialist Therapist to make sure you're being taught how to self-treat and that you're um, taking the time early on to really feel it and be present rather than, you know, having TVs and everything, you know, stuff on in the background, take some quiet time, especially early on. And then eventually it, be it becomes more automatic. Um, and, uh, slowing down a little bit and letting yourself, you, you know, the tree roots visualization is a great example. Grounding yourself. We teach our Therapists that come to do the skill enhancement seminar um, when they they come and treat patients with us after taking um, MFR one, we teach them right away the tree roots visualization. There's many ways to ground yourself, but um, using those concepts or other ways to ground yourself through your day, taking that time, is a great way to um, to feel into your body and change what you're doing through the day so that mm -hmm. you're feeling good and um, you know. Uh, it, it's it, it helps you to become your own best therapist, I think. Yeah, and a, a better therapist yeah, all, exactly. all the way around. I, re yeah. I really think that's what has helped me so much. And, and so many patients, we're trying to teach them how to feel into their own bodies. And if you haven't done that yourself, yeah. you certainly can't teach somebody else how to do it. Mm -hmm. And if the patient isn't learning it, mm -hmm. then they're not going to have as good of right. results. Right? And I just say never stop learning. No matter how mm -hmm. long we've been doing this work, we're always developing you know, our appropriate set the senses to an even deeper level. We're mm -hmm. always learning new things um, uh, from, and like you, you have, you, Cindy does <laughs> some great, <laughs> she offered uh, some great uh, self-treatment uh, tips for uh, some of our patients this week. We loved it. The, your legs up the wall, which I, uh, she, yeah, she loves her legs <laughs> up the wall. Yeah. And I'm trying to find some better wall space in my house to do that. But uh the, the yoga strap things that you've mm -hmm. showed me, they're great. Um, and the patients that you shared that with this week really loved it. So um, always be open to learning and just, um, the, uh, the other thing that I learned early on is, and this was because I, when I, I did, I did my, one of my internships at John's Treatment Center and it was, it was an incredible experience. The results that I saw back then were remarkable with even long-standing problems, unusual diagnosis. I would go home energized by the work they were doing yes. at the clinic. Mm -hmm. And that, um, you know, certainly made an impression on me. Um, so when I went to my final affiliation, that was with, it was in a inpatient rehabilitation hospital and they were just starting a new uh, chronic pain program and it was multi, it was a multidisciplinary multidisciplinary program and they heard that i was coming from a pain center and uh, back then back in the 80s we were known as a pain and stress control center so they thought oh great you know so the coordinator of the program who happened to be a psychologist approached me and asked me if i would coordinate the physical therapy part of the program so of course i said you know first of all i said i'm well i'm still a student <laughs> <laughs> he, he said that's okay so I told him I would do it and uh but in my mind I was like yes I could do my official release with all these patients I was so excited I could wait to get started so the next day he came in with a book three inches thick told me to read it well it was a book about the Seattle pain clinic from which we're in a model our new program well, their program was heavily based in behavior modification mm -hmm. Uh, they were teaching their patients how to learn to live with the pain and how to manage the pain. They were doing behavior modification, make quieter patients who would complain so much, relaxation training to help them better cope with the pain, but they weren't doing anything to get rid of the pain. So this is what's termed as pain management. Right. And this is Deal still out it. there. This is, Deal this is, it. yeah, this is the way traditional medicine um, deals with pain and dysfunction is teaching, teaching you how to live with it. And what our approach is, um, it, our slogan is to return to a pain-free active lifestyle. We're not about learning to live with it. We're learning, uh, helping people to get rid of it. So, <laughs> so anyway, don't live with it. Get no, rid of it. get rid of it. That's right. <laughs> I, I like could that. be into it. So anyway, he, um, so, so th when I learned about this program, I was like, whoa, this is really different than where I just came from John Barnes treatment center. 
And the next day he came back to me and he said, um, you know, you're to give your patients a list of, list of exercises and get a baseline number of repetitions. And each day increase the number of repetitions that they do no matter how they feel. And then he said to me, and I'll never forget this, he said, if they complain of pain, you're to walk away. And I was shocked that I was hearing this, like walk away from them, you know, because they're complaining of pain. That's behavior modification. And again, night and day between what Job Barnes teaches, which is, you know, authentic, you know, therapy and this. Um, so having come from John Barnes Treatment Center to this and being, I was only 22, so I wasn't thinking of consequences. I did their exercises, had them do their exercises out in the gym. And then I would take my patient to the head trauma room, which was a padded private treatment room, was tucked away in the back of the apartment, had a solid oak door, two inches thick, it was totally soundproof. So there behind closed doors, I would do my fast release with my patients and they loved it. They really appreciated what I was doing until one day this woman had such a dramatic response. She had unwound and very profound uh, releases and she was energized by the experience. And, um, when flying down to her next appointment, which happened to be the psychologist who was the coordinator of the program, who immediately came flying into the gym demanding to know what I had done to produce such a traumatic response, he was upset because he said that it, she let go of too much. She had let go of some emotion from a trauma many, many years prior. But he was concerned because he said that she had let go of too much at once. It would take her months to process and she would never be able to deal with it. Yet this woman who was using an electric wheelchair to get around was now standing and walking wow. again. So the thing is, are the things that we hold on to in life, those, you know, these protective bracing responses, this fight, flight or freeze that gets us through that trauma, that initial trauma, um, is meant to last for a couple of hours or a couple of weeks or something like that, not a couple of decades, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so that weighs us down. That's what solidifies the ground substance. And, um, tightens us down, we curl into ourselves, it, it pulls us down at 2,000 pounds per square inch. So um, it's opening the system up, you know, through, through my fascia release. And in this woman, in this case, she let go of a lot of emotion that was stuck in her system. And it was very freeing for her, and it, she was totally energized afterwards. Um, but so I guess the moral of that story, if I could impart, <laughs> if I can impart any words of wisdom, and this is something I learned early on and, and from John is do what you know is right. And, 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 um, what's right by your patient or client is, is to do what, you, what is in their best interest. Um, I think a lot of times if you're working with insurance companies, you get caught up in what's in the best interest of the insurance companies who are breathing down therapists back and dictating the care and how long you can see somebody and exactly what they're going to do. But, um, you know, what happened is this, when he found out what I was doing, he, he, uh, he said, Oh, I'm going to watch you every session. He came, he came down and would watch me and that it piqued his curiosity. So, because of that, because, because I stuck to what I knew was right and how John taught me, um, I was able to open the eyes of many people there at that hospital who then went on to take his seminars and, you know, to, to started doing the work. So rather than retreating because that wasn't what they did at the hospital, I just did it in a way that I could and it worked out for the best. Awesome. <laughs> so do what, do what you know is right and, and everything else will, uh, the rest will take care of itself. So. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited to be here for just a little bit longer next yeah. week. And thanks so much for sharing some tidbits and thoughts and words of wisdom. And maybe we'll do it again. If anybody has any specific questions, they yeah. want to ask you. Or, that, or you can remember <laughs> some amazing stories. That okay. We share. There's, yeah. <laughs> but we can always we'll do talk. That. We'll talk but some we'll more. Talk. All right. So, Thank thanks you. so much. Thanks.